Yes. That joined with the uh, Mikolaj. Pakjik. And uh, <clears throat> okay, let me start by by uh, the main theorem or, or one of the main theorem that we proved is the following theorem. So uh, let uh, G be a simple Lie group uh, of a real rank at least two, uh, and lambda inside G a, a discrete subgroup. of infinite co-volume, uh, a discrete subgroup. So uh, uh, let uh, M be G mod K is a symmetric space, G mod K mod lambda is the corresponding uh, locally symmetric uh, uh, orbifold. Uh, then if the volume of M is infinite, then uh, <clears throat> M contains uh, or for every uh, or M contains ball of arbitrary large radius. So for every uh, R, there is P inside M such that the injectivity radius uh, is at least R. So uh, <clears throat> This was a conjecture, conjecture by Margulis, and uh, and uh, uh, so that uh, this result is in a, in a sense unique in a sense that uh, it applies to arbitrary discrete subgroup uh, of uh, of semi of of G, uh, where there are plenty of results uh, and there is a beautiful theory for lattices, and this result is uh, is does not assume or is even more interesting when, uh, when gamma is not a lattice. Uh, <clears throat> but it also can be read as a result about lattices. It says that uh, if the injectivity radius of M is uh, bounded, then M is finite volume. So in a sense, uh, maybe you can use it, or it can be useful to show that certain groups are lattices. For instance, Morghuli says a wonderful proof of the Borel-Arishandra theorem. He showed that every arithmetic group it's finite volume by showing that the injectivity radius uh, goes to zero when you go to infinity. So if you apply this theorem, you need a bit less. You just need to show that the injectivity radius is bounded and does, and does not go to infinity and it will imply finite volume, but only in higher rank. So this theorem is not true in rank one. So uh, let me uh, give an example. So suppose that the uh, rank of G is one, like the hyperbolic space or the complex hyperbolic or the quaternionic hyperbolic. And, uh, and let uh, gamma inside G be a co-compact lattice, a uniform lattice. <clears throat> uh, let lambda inside a gamma be normal, non-trivial, of infinite index. So gamma is a hyperbolic group. So every hyperbolic group admits plenty of normal subgroups. So in particular, the normal subgroup theorem of Margulis does not apply in rank one. So there are such a, a lambda. Uh, then the manifold M, which is a, a G mod K mod lambda has bounded injectivity radius. Although it is of infinite volume. Uh, really, if you can mute uh, the rest, it will be helpful. And, uh, and the proof is, is as follows. So consider let uh, alpha be inside lambda, non-trivial. Uh, let uh, omega in G uh, be compact fundamental domain for gamma uh, and let uh, D be the maximum of the displacement 
gamma x x where x belongs to omega. So, okay, I think of it in the symmetric space. So uh, <coughs> then uh, the injectivity radius inside M of any point is at most D. And to see that, uh, consider let P tilde be inside a G mod K, a lift of P and uh, uh, take uh, gamma such that gamma inverse P tilde, you can bring it into the fundamental domain. And then think of the element gamma alpha gamma inverse of, or here it was alpha. The max, this is, since the fundamental domain is compact, uh, alpha is a, a, some bounded displacement on the fundamental domain. And now I consider this element this element is inside the normal subgroup lambda, but the displacement of uh, this element, gamma, alpha, gamma, inverse uh, of P is the same as the displacement uh, of uh, alpha of the point gamma inverse P, which is inside omega which is bounded by D. So you see, in particular, when the, the theorem that uh, holds, you cannot have, it, the theorem implies the normal subgroup theorem. That's what, uh, so, so when the normal subgroup theorem is not true, the theorem is not true. And the theorem uh, has other application. For instance, it uh, also, if you know the, the, the seven summarized uh, result that if you have a sequence of manifold with uh, volume goes to infinity, then the injectivity radius goes to infinity. And uh, this also can be deduced from that theorem. So in a sense, it generalizes both the normal subgroup theorem and uh, the seven summarize of that. Uh, I think, <laughs> yes. But uh, can you prove the normal subgroup theorem for a non-uniform lattice as well? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. So uh, you will see I, I, there is a, a, a probabilistic version of that. So, uh, so let me uh, uh, define this property. So lambda inside G discrete will be called uh, uniformly slim if uh, the injectivity radius in, uh, in G mod K mod lambda is bounded. And this is uh, equivalent to say, let me, yeah. and this is equivalent to say that uh, uh, there is C inside G compact such that a lambda, any conjugation of lambda intersects C non-trivially. So that's uniformly slim. <clears throat> and, uh, and then uh, a remark that lambda is not uniformly slim If you can conjugate it to intersect trivially every compact group, so if and only if the conjugacy class of gamma uh, of lambda uh, contains in the Chabadi topology contains a trivial group. If you can, if you can conjugate it, uh, if okay, it can converge, conju converge to by conjugates to the trivial group. That's a, a non-uniformly slim uh, group. By the way, I by I use I use lambda to to denote a group which are not lattices and gamma to denote group which are lattices. Lambda could be a lattice, but a priori it's not. Uh, so let me state uh, the theorem uh, in a slightly more gen general case. 
So let G be now semi-simple, uh, center free, uh, semi-simple, and so connected. And suppose that the rank of each factor is at least two. Lam <coughs> lambda inside G discrete. Then lambda is uniformly slim if and only if there is H inside G non-trivial, which is a semi-simple factor. It's a normal subgroup, so it means that it's a product of some of the factors such that uh, H intersect lambda uh, is a lattice in H. So that's a, that's a theorem in, in that case. <clears throat> um, and we also have variants of this theorem uh, when you allow rank one groups. So, uh, <clears throat> um, but before that, uh, the, somehow the main idea was to consider random walks. So you know that a few years ago, people started to consider invariant random subgroups uh, to get, uh, for me, it was exciting to get new results about lattices, the deterministic group by considering random subgroup, invariant random subgroup. But invariant random subgroup are limited and cannot be applied to general groups. Um, while stationary random subgroups, so, so measures which are not invariant but stationary are much more general and applies to much more general context. So, uh, so the idea of considering a random walk is, is, uh, um, is, is, is a good idea here. So, uh, um, so let, uh, let, let, like in Uri talk, uh, let me start with a probability measure on, on G. I will denote it by nu. Uh, it's a probability measure on G, which is a, a specific probability measure. Uh, so K is the maximal compact. And, uh, and I take the convolution uh, with a Dirac measure. So NK is HAR on the compact, uh, maximal compact, uh, normalized HAR. And uh, S is some uh, semi-simple element uh, which uh, uh, acts by uh, sufficiently good expansion on the unipotent uh, uh, radical of, uh, of a fixed minimal parabolic. So in, for SLN, uh, it will be an element, a diagonal element uh, like that, such that AI is much bigger than AI plus one. But, but Sari, just so you know, it's, it's like calling, uh, like re reverting the role of epsilon and delta, this thing that you're doing. What do you mean? I mean, calling this nu and the other one mu is... Uh... Yeah, I, I agree, but, uh, but I got used to that. So, okay, after the talk, I can try to get used to the other, but, but uh, I, I, let me do that. I'm, I'm think I'm more dyslectic than most of you. So, so I will use nu for the measure on G. So nu is the measure on G and it, this specific measure, I'm not going to change it anymore. So it's a specific measure. Sorry, can I yeah. ask a quick question about the theorem? Sure. Um, L, uh, lambda intersection H, does it need to be, can it be any lattice or does it need to be uniform? Any lattice, yeah, any lattice is uniformly slim. A any lattice is uniformly slim because the injectivity ah, lattice- needs to, just to be bounded, okay. Yes. Think about the thick, thin decomposition. So the thin part is thin anyhow, and the thick part is compact. So any lattice is uniformly slim. And in, and in, in higher rank, so in higher rank simple group, uniformly slim is equivalent to be a lattice. But uh, for higher rank simple group, for, for product of simple group of higher rank, uniformly slim is equivalent to contains a lattice in, in some product. Um, so, um, so now let, uh, uh, let uh, sub G uh, uh, be the space, uh, the Chabati space of a closed subgroup. of G. So this is a compact metrizable space. It's a nice space on which G acts by conjugation. And inside 
let sub uh, discrete G uh, be the subspace, the open subset of a discrete subgroup. <clears throat> and uh, the idea is to apply a random walk on uh, that space. So G acts by conjugation. So, uh, so consider uh, mu n, which will be uh, the Cesaro average uh, when i goes from zero to n minus one of uh, nu to the i convolution with uh, uh, Dirac on this lambda. I start with a discrete group lambda and then I start to conjugating by a random element from u and I iterate it and take the Cesaro average. Then uh, uh, <laughs> this, uh, since the space of measures uh, is a weak star compact, uh, there will be a, a limit to the sequence and this will be a stationary measure. Um, so, and let uh, mu infinity be a stationary, stationary limit. So it is stationary measure, which is a limit of this uh, sequence. So any, sequ any limit of the sequence will be stationary. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so here is the theorem that, uh, that uh, we proved. And now I will, it's one of the theorems. So um, let G be the product G1 cross G2 cross GM uh, be center free. semi-simple without compact factor. So now I allow rank one factors, but uh, <clears throat> suppose that lambda in G does not intersect a, a non-trivial fact, semi-simple factor, which means a non-trivial a non subproduct of the GI uh, by a lattice. I cannot only assume that it's not uniformly slim because I allow rank one factors and in rank one, you can be uniformly slim without being a lattice. Uh, then the, the stationary limit, then mu infinity uh, is supported on discrete subgroups of uh, the product of rank one, a, a simple factor. So you, there is some rigidity phenomena here. So you start with the groups with rank one factor and higher rank factors, and then you do this random walk and the random walk escape from all the high rank factors and limits into the rank one factors. Uh, in particular, if all the if all these uh, uh, factors are for rank two or more, then the then there is a unique stationary limit, which is the which the Dirac measure on the trivial group. Um, and in fact, if you look in the paper, there, there are some variant with more information. For instance, if you assume that G is property T, so all the rank one factor are of the form SPN one or F four minus twenty then you can say more about the product, the, the limit. The limit will not just be a discrete subgroup of the product, but it will be a product of discrete subgroup in, in, in the factors. And in each factor, the, the, the limit will be either trivial or is a risky dense. And uh, if the group that is started is uniformly slim, then, then the limit will also be a product of uniformly slim groups. And uh, this result eliminates uh, some cases because if you start with a group which is which does not contain large product, 
then also in the limit you cannot have large products. Uh, if if you have commuting large commuting subgroup in the limit, you you will you must have large commuting subgroup in the original group. So so sometimes you can say more, but for that uh, you have to assume an additional assumption, which are a uh, property T. Sorry, do you think T is necessary for this? What? Or just an artifact of the proof. Sorry. For product of rank one groups, do you think T is necessary for the separation uh, into factors? I don't understand the question. I, I said that uh, this other thing that you proved uh, for rank one groups, you, you do under the assumption uh, of property T. Yeah. Do if you, you think don't property T? If you don't assume property T? Yes. Okay. Th there are some things that are necessary and something that we don't know, but we are limited because of the Stug Zimmer uh, result. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, so it's something in between. So, so we have an example of uh, in rank in product of rank one. We have example of interesting, uh, uh, if interesting. Uh, for this theorem, you, you cannot really improve it by much. Uh, even even if you prove the Stuck Zimmer uh, for product of rank one without property T, but there are other statement that you can improve. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so let me just uh, before the break st state. Uh, uh, two results. Uh, the one is uh, uh, is uh, uh, if you want Nevo Zimmer uh, type uh, uh, theorem. So it's a uh, it's Nevo Zimmer applied to this uh, specific uh, um, a situation that uh, um, that. Uh, uh, so measure stationary measure on the space of discrete subgroup. So so let uh, G be as above. Uh, and let uh, mu uh, be a stationary stationary. A measure on uh, the space of discrete subgroup of G. So it's a stationary measure on the compact space of a subgroup of G, of closed subgroup, which give measure one to the open subset of discrete subgroup. Suppose that almost surely uh, the intersection with every rank one factor is trivial. And this, uh, this is a necessary assumption. Uh, then uh, mu is invariant, is an IRS. So it's, uh, it's an IRS. And this, uh, uh, yeah, so um, this is uh, the, Nevo Zimmer type result for this specific. Uh, you can uh, state actually the same result with a weaker assumption. You don't need to assume that the intersection with each rank one factor is trivial. It's enough to assume that it's not Zorichki dense. Uh, uh, and that's, you get the same result. And now. Uh, Afik, what do you mean by intersection? Intersection of what with the rank one factors? So, so you have a measure on the space of subgroup. So, so a, a, a random object there is a subgroup. So almost surely this subgroup intersect trivially every rank one factor. That's the assumption. And, and the second result, and then, uh, then we go to a break, is uh, Stug Zimmer type result. And uh, it follows from Stuck Zimmer with uh, 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 in this situation. So uh, let G be as above. And assume G has Kashdan property T. Uh, <clears throat> then let uh, mu be as above. then mu is mu gamma for 
some gamma inside H inside G, where H is a normal subgroup and gamma is the lattice. And what do I mean by mu gamma? Uh, H mod gamma is a probability measure and you have a map from H mod gamma to sub H, which is inside sub G, sending a, a, an element H gamma to the conjugate H gamma H inverse, and you push the, the probability measure from H mod gamma to here and you get, uh, and this will be mu. And uh, so this is uh, the Nevo-Zimmer type result. So this is basically somehow uh, most of the main result uh, that we proved. And uh, maybe now it's a good time for a break or for questions about the result. So let me just uh, answer a bit uh, uh, quickly to Yair question. Yair, Yair, I, I gave example that a normal subgroup uh, in a co-compact lattice are uniformly slim. And Yair asked me if a normal subgroup in a non-co-compact non subgroup in, uh, are also uniformly slim. So in fact, this I don't know. Uh, but what I can tell you that, but our proof, our theorem implies also the normal subgroup theorem uh, in that case, because our theorem says that if you do a random walk on, on, on the manifold, uh, then with probability tending to one, you will, be, you will spend most of the time in the, in the R thick part for every R. Uh, you combine it with the eskin margulis theorem, which is about random walk on uh, G mod gamma, and they tell you what, that with some pro positive probability, you spend time in the, in gum, in, in the thick part of, uh, of a lattice. So if you do it for a, a lattice and a normal subgroup in the same time, then you see that in the lattice, you will be in the thick part and in the normal subgroup, you will be in the, uh, in the very thick part. So, so, so that's a, somehow contradict uh, each other. So, okay. Uh, Okay, I will not, I will not do the same more details here because it will conf confuse me, but uh, we can talk about it later. Uh, yeah, so, so, so now it's a good time for a break if... Uh... So let's do break until 25 to... 25 to... 4. Excellent. So maybe stop, uh, pause the recording. Uh, so we continue, and, and now I, uh, it's a part of the of the proofs. You are unshared again. I'm I'm unshared. So uh, just a moment. Um, okay, let's so, move. Excuse me. So before you continue. Yeah, I have a question about the the implications about of the between the theorems that you stated. I lost track of uh, of things. Can you briefly repeat? Uh, did I say implications? Okay. So, so the, the the last two theorems they they imply the red one uh, that you stated, or how does it uh, go? What was the red one? Uh, the was the bottom. The... In the in the bottom, in the end, you stated three. No, ah, no, no, no. The last two theorem do not directly imply the theorem, the red theorem. Okay. So there is a there is a decomposition theorem that uh, that we prove that implies all three theorems here, but I didn't state it. Uh, okay. I didn't state it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's a good question. So uh, <clears throat> okay. So. So let uh, let uh, uh, Lee G be the Lee algebra. Uh, so in particular, from now, assume that G is simple. Uh, and the rank now of G is at least two. So our paper is, uh, is 22 pages because we do a lot of work uh, to deal with the general semi-simple case and in particular, the case with the rank one factor. But when G is simple of uh, rank two or more, then, then uh, um, you can see the, the idea in, in short and, 
and many of the technicality become uh, redundant. So, um, uh, okay, consider the Lie algebra and uh, let uh, uh, fix a norm be a norm uh, on uh, the Lie algebra. Uh, such that uh, the exponent uh, from the unit ball uh, to let's say u inside g uh, is a deformorphism. One-to-one uh, -one deformorphism uh, where b is uh, the set, the unit ball. And then I uh, define <clears throat> I define a, a for gamma inside G, I define I of gamma to be the discreteness, uh, radius, and uh, I of gamma, uh, lambda, I of lambda will be, uh, let's say the minimum between one, so it's at most one, uh, and uh, the norm of log uh, of gamma uh, <clears throat> where gamma is inside uh, lambda minus the identity. Uh, and if you want, and the log is, is well defined. So we, lambda is in this neighborhood. So if, uh, if uh, my group intersect trivially this ball, then I take the intensity, the discreteness radius to be one and otherwise it will be the norm of the smallest non-trivial element. And, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, here is a theorem that uh, uh, from a paper with the uh, Ariel Levitt and uh, Margulis. And the theorem says the following, there exists a constant delta and a constant C and a constant beta, a B, such that um, for every uh, lambda inside G discrete, the integral of a, a, the integral of i of lambda to the minus delta d nu and nu is the measure that I introduced before the convolution with the the bicane variant measure uh, with the semi simple expanding element uh, this is uh, C times the value before the, integ the, con the integration plus B. So if I denote by U of lambda, uh, this I of lambda into the minus delta, then basically it says that a new convolution uh, U at any point lambda is uh, at most C times U of lambda plus B. And uh, let's take this for granted. Yes. Uh, the integral is d nu. Uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I forgot to write. So I, 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 yeah, the integral is d nu of g. I, I conjugate by g. Yeah. G acts on the space of subgroup. Yeah. But basically, this is what you should remember. Convolution of nu with this function uh, satisfy this inequality. Sometimes function that satisfies such inequality are called Margulis functions. So from this, we can deduce the following theorem, which is the starting point of our work. So uh, let mu be uh, any measure on the space uh, of discrete subgroup uh, 
And mu n as above will be the Cesaro sum of nu to the i convolution mu, uh, I go from zero to n minus one, uh, and this converge to a stationary limit or a subsequent, yeah, you can take some stationary limit. I will write it in short like that. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, the stationary limit is also supported on the space of discrete sum. So a stationary limit is almost surely discrete. That's the theorem. And let's see the proof because it's uh, it's can be written very shortly. Uh, proof. So, how do you show that a, a measure on on subgroup is supported on discrete subgroup? It's enough to show. Uh, we need to show that for every epsilon, there is v inside G, identity neighborhood, open such that uh, the probability that a subgroup intersect V non-trivially, uh, non-trivially um, is smaller than epsilon. This will tell you that if for every epsilon you can find such an open set, then, then the measure is supported on discrete group. So it's enough to show that there exists such V such that uh, nu to the I convolution mu has this property. Uh, Because mu n is a, is the average of such measure, and each if each of them satisfy this, then also the average and also the limit. So I will tell you what to take. So so so. You show that there exists i such that for every bigger i. Yeah, but it's a, but I will show you that for every i. Uh, so so I, I I'm cheating a bit, but uh, you will see immediately. So so consider the integral of u of lambda. Uh, d nu convolution mu. This is smaller than c times u of lambda. Uh, yes, like this. U of lambda uh, g uh, d mu plus b. And if you iterate this uh, i times, then you see that the integral of uh, u of lambda uh, d nu to the i convolution mu i times will be less than c to the i, this integral, uh, plus uh, b minus something like that. So suppose this is finite. A priori does not have to be finite, but you, but but this is uh, where I'm slight, slightly teaching. But if this is finite, then this is bounded by some constant. What is the constant? Is is uh, is this integral plus this constant? Because c is smaller than one. And and the, the fact that it's not finite is doesn't is not important. Like uh, you can, yeah, believe me, it's not important. Anyhow, so. It, or if you want, state the same theorem uh, for uh, when you start with mu, which uh, such as this integral is finite, then it's uh, then this is a proof, and then uh, and then I tell you what do you take? Um, you take uh, v to be uh, the set of all, uh, yeah. I, what is V? V will be, where did I write it? Uh, That's time. Uh, I mean, before you proceed, can I say something about this uh, proof? Uh, uh, yeah, but, 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 but let, let me just uh, write what is V? V will be the set uh, where, uh, where the log, B, 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 V will be the set of all G in G such that the log 
of G, the norm of that is smaller than uh, epsilon over M to the power one minus one over delta. Yes, and this is, yeah, this will work. Okay. What, Uri? Uh, sorry for interrupting, but uh, I mean, I, I just wanted to, uh, to give some perspective about this uh, trick of using this uh, Margulis function. So, uh, it, uh, Margulis design, or maybe this is a variation of tool that, that existed even before. Yes. Uh, a way to, to show that the mass does not escape to infinity when you apply convolution, and this is when uh, a certain function satisfies this uh, A f plus b property mm -hmm. yes and yeah, uh, this, this idea of uh, we apply it here but this idea appeared before in particular in eskin morgulis work when they right. added random walk on uh, on g mod gamma yeah right classically people use it to to show that random walks on g mod gamma do not escape to the to the cast but here this is very nice i mean uh, they use it like uh, Ari and morgulis probably to, to show that uh, something does not escape to infinity where infinity is the non-discrete subgroups uh, in, inside subject. Yeah, so th this theorem is, is uh, with, by me, Collage, Frakcik and, and me. Uh, with Margulis and, and Arya, we, we prove this uh, thing very effectively we, with specific constant uh, that we, we write explicitly because we want to get some uh, very explicit uh, estimates on several statements like I've done Margulis theorem for, for, for Lie groups. But, uh, but uh, here, for, for the work with the Nicolage, uh, we don't really care what are the constants, just that the, they exist. And, uh, and then we apply this uh, idea of Eskin and Margulis and we, we, we get this. And, um, and then uh, let me recall uh, Nevo-Zimmer theorem for this uh, that Uri, uh, explained to us very beautifully in the previous talk, nouveau Zimmer theorem uh, say the following. So if X uh, mu is uh, a stationary uh, G space, uh, <coughs> then either a uh, mu is invariant or there is a, a parabolic factor, a measure preserving factor a map a, from x mu to a g mod q uh, the stationary measure here uh, for some parabolic Q. So this is the Nevo-Zimmer theorem. Uh, <clears throat> so now uh, I can complete the proof of uh, our theorem. So uh, we wish to show that if uh, the volume of G mod lambda is infinity, then the stationary limit of this random walk is the Dirac measure on the identity. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, okay, let, uh, let Q be a parabolic subgroup. So subgroup. Uh, and let uh, Ln be a, a Levy decomposition of Q. So N is the unipotent radical and L is the reductive uh, subgroup. So N is well defined and L is not well defined. Uh, and let uh, A be the center of, uh, of L. 
So I do some very, very uh, elementary uh, uh, facts about parabolic group. So here is a lemma. Um, an A invariant probability measure on uh, the space of discrete subgroup of Q Uh, is trivial. No, it, uh, is supported on subgroups of the Levy. That's the first. Uh, th that's the first lemma. And uh, why is that proof? There exists a in the center, which acts by expansion on N, on the unipotent radical. You can find, find such a thing. And therefore, if you have uh, with non-positive, with non-trivial probability, you intersect N or you, you don't intersect L, then you can push this stuff to infinity. So this is, if you want the intuition for this lemma, the proof itself is uh, not one line, but maybe seven line in the paper. So, so, uh, so yes, yeah, so there's no such, so such a measure must be containing L. The next lemma is that the intersection of all the conjugation of L over the unipotent radical is trivial. Okay, this is actually central, but uh, let's assume that uh, G is central free. Uh, so this intersection is, is trivial and uh, so as I said, the N is canonic, so it's a radical, it's a normal, uh, it's well-defined, but L in the Levy decomposition is not canonic as always. And it, if you do the intersection of all the choice of L, then it's trivial. So a corollary of uh, these two lemma combined together is the following. So let P inside Q uh, be minimal parabolic Uh, then a P invariant probability measure on the space of discrete subgroup of Q is trivial. Is, uh, it must be uh, the Dirac on the trivial group. That's the only P invariant uh, such measure. <clears throat> That's a consequence. Why? Because uh, because n is containing p. The unipotent radical of l is containing p. So now we can uh, apply the stuff that Uri told us in 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 the last lecture. So uh, so let's now complete the proof of the theorem. So you, as you see, the, the, in the simple case, it's, it's really straightforward. So, um, okay. So uh, G is simple and uh, um, rank, rank of G is at least two. So uh, <clears throat> then if, mu infinity is uh, invariant, then the, the Stuck-Zimmer theorem tell us implies uh, that uh, either that, uh, that uh, either mu infinity is the Dirac on the trivial, which is what we want. So this is, a, this is fine. Or a mu infinity is mu gamma a, for gamma a lattice. Oh. 
או גם אלאטיס. Now, אלאטיס in, in a higher rank simple league group uh, is locally rigid. So, so by the way, mu infinity is always uh, supported uh, on the conjugacy class of lambda. If we start with lambda and you do this uh, random walk, uh, so you always stay in the conjugacy cl class of lambda and in the limit, you will be in the closure of the conjugacy class of lambda. So, <clears throat> so that implies that gamma is contained the lattice gamma is contained in the conjugacy class of gamma. In the closure. So you can approximate lambda, a gamma by conjugate of gamma. But, uh, but gamma is locally rigid. Gamma is locally rigid implies that actually, uh, if gamma, if lambda to the G is, is too close, is sufficiently close, uh, close to gamma, then, uh, <coughs> then it is, gamma, then it contains a conjugate. of gamma. So, but if you contain a conjugate of a lattice, this implies that lambda is a lattice. A discrete group that contains a lattice is a lattice, and this is a contradiction, so we, because we assume that lambda is not a lattice. Okay, that's deal with the case that uh, mu infinity is invariant when we apply um, Stug Zimmer. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't say, I, maybe I jumped, uh, but uh, this fact that the uh, stationary limits of a uh, measure supported on discrete group uh, is still supported on discrete group is what allow us to, to do this random walk starting by, by a specific uh, lambda and start to conjugate it. And then to say that the limit is also of this type. It's, the limit is supported on discrete group. So- well, Sarek, why did you assume that lambda is not a lattice? I mean Ah, no, if lambda is a lattice, then it's, it's uniform. It's it's a lattice. And, and then yeah. I want to, I consider lambda, which is not a lattice, and I want to show that the random walk converge to the Dirac mass on the trivial group. Mm -hmm. okay. And so if, so I take this random walk, I take a stationary limit, and I say, if the stationary limit is invariant, then fine, because of Stuck Zimmer. Because of the theorem before, it's supported on the discrete group, and because of Stuck Zimmer, uh, if it's invariant, then it's an IRS uh, supported on discrete group, so, so it's other trivial. Uh, actually, to apply to Zimmer, maybe you don't even need that uh, it's supported on discrete group. Uh, it's, yeah, it for, in that case, it follows from Stug Zimmer. Uh, suppose now, uh, uh, if you want, by, by, in contrary, suppose by way of contradiction, that uh, mu infinity is not invariant. So if it was, if it's invariant and we're done, and now we show that if you assume that it's not invariant, we actually get that it is invariant because it must be uh, uh, the trivial, uh, the Dirac on the trivial. So by Nevoz email, Uh, we have a parabolic factor. A measure preserving factor, uh, if you want sub G um, mu infinity, uh, and it factors to G mod Q uh, nu Q. And uh, <clears throat> and then by, univ by universality of the Poisson boundary, that we explained as, which is G mod P, 
uh, we get a map uh, from Gmod P. Uh, there is a unique map. We have a unique map. From Gmod P to uh, sub G. And similarly, a, a map to from G mod P to G mod Q. Uh, sorry, not to sub G to probability measure on sub G. And to probability measure on G mod Q, uh, such that uh, uh, this uh, diagram. Uh, a commute because this uh, is uh, so we uh, explain that very nicely the, the way I I, uh, I, uh, I like to think about it I, I, okay uh, I'm less used to this stuff than Uri but um, so so if you want we usually think of the uh, Poisson boundary of uh, of a group as the the space that L infinity of the Poisson boundary is correspond to the harmonic function on G. So if you want uh, to say that uh, uh, a measure in this space is a new, is a, is new stationary, it just means that uh, the map, uh, its orbit map from G, G goes to G times mu is uh, harmonic. The orbit map is harmonic, so the measure must be um, if you want a bar center of a map to uh, to the space of measure, okay, maybe this wasn't such. I, I shouldn't try to <laughs> to say it in my world after all we explain it in in a, a much better way. But anyhow, we get such a map. Now this map we know what it is. So every um, this map uh, G P goes to the Dirac of uh, the conjugate of Q by G. So, uh, <clears throat> so that's the, the unique, the unique uh, uh, P invariant measure on G mod Q is the Dirac on Q. And the unique, uh, uh, the unique G P, the unique G P invariant measure on G mod Q is the Dirac measure on this conjugate. <clears throat> so it means that uh, uh, if we look at the measure corresponding to a point here and then we look at it here, it will be, uh, it will be this measure. But that means that the stabilizer are contained in the stabilizer here, which is exactly this. So, so in particular, if you take a generic point with respect to the measure, suppose the generic point is the P itself, uh, <clears throat> we get a measure on subgroup of Q, which is P invariant. So we get a discrete measure. So if we denote this map by N, N of GP, is a G P G inverse invariant measure on discrete subgroup of G Q G inverse. And the lemmas that we had before, or the corollary says that there is no such measure. So the corollary implies that this is just the Dirac on the identity. <clears throat> and so, 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 and therefore, and therefore mu itself is the Dirac on the identity. So this is the complete proof if you want in the, in the case that G is simple, uh, modulo details that uh, you can look in the paper. Most of the paper is dedicated to the case where G is not simple. Uh, and uh, in particular, where G has 
rank one factor, then things become much more complicated. And uh, in particular, there are many open questions that remains about uh, um, what are uniformly slim subgroup, for instance, in rank one factors, in rank one groups, simple groups. So does every uniformly slim subgroup contain the normal subgroup of a lattice, for instance? Or there are, there are also questions about stationary limits of, um, of, uh, of general discrete group inside rank one groups. Uh, we have some example, but we don't understand the full picture, but, uh, um, and, and again, there is something that I didn't say uh, uh, because I didn't go uh, too focused about the precise best result that we can get. But if, uh, if you try to get the best result, then you're also limited because of, uh, you want to apply Stokes Zimmer. And Stokes Zimmer is known where G ad admits property T even in the case that there are rank one factor, if G admit property T and you assume that uh, every factor acts ergodically, then, uh, 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 then there is the Stokes Zimmer. And also if you assume that only one factor is property T, then uh, uh, a result of Yair Hartman and, uh, and Omer Tamuz says that you can apply um, Stokes Zimmer. Uh, but in the case that, for instance, for SL2R times SL2R, and things like that, uh, we don't know. So uh, then that's uh, one of the big open problems that are left in the theory of invariant time subgroup. And, and since we don't know the case there, so we cannot say, for instance, what are the uniformly slim subgroup of SL2R times SL2R? Uh, do you have a uniformly slim subgroup that uh, uh, project densely to each factor um, and it's not a lattice? So the normal subgroup theorem is true for lattices in SL2R and SL2R. That's a, uh, Margulis did it uh, in all cases, uh, including that case, but uh, gave it a, a more difficult proof for that case. There is the beautiful work on, of Bader and Shalom that uh, deals with the normal subgroup theorem in general locally compact groups, product of locally compact group. Um, but here it's something uh, which uh, it's, it's a more general version than the normal subgroup theorem. So, you, you are not inside a lattice, or even if you are inside a lattice, but not a normal subgroup of a lattice, then, uh, uh, okay, may, maybe, uh, yeah, even then, um, but, but, but if you, uh, also if you assume that there is no lattice in the picture, what can you say about uh, uh, something that sits generic in a product of SL2? Uh, at the moment, not much. Uh, so there are some left uh, open problems. Uh, in the last uh, couple of minutes, I would like to say that um, I also learned uh, when working on this that, uh, that uh, when you think of invariant random subgroup, it limits you. You cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, say something general uh, because, uh, and for instance, in rank one, sometimes when you, you start this random walk with a group, the stationary limit will not be invariant. Um, so the stationary limit uh, may be uh, stationary, but not invariant. So, so if you want to, so, so when you, if you restrict yourself to, to deal with invariant random subgroup, which I find as a great generalization of, of lattices considering uh, invariant random subgroup, but to consider stationary random subgroup, it's even greater. So even, it's even allow you to say things that you cannot say by just applying theory of uh, IRS. Uh, okay, so I think uh, I will leave now time for questions.